<laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to the first official episode of Art of the Scare. Um, this is a series I've been wanting to do for a while now. Um, it's obvious that I'm a huge fan of the horror genre, and I've always been fascinated by things that scare people. Scary stories, creepy urban legends, and things like that. And for a while, I wanted to do a series where I look at what is considered the scariest scene from certain movies, or at least one of the scariest scenes from certain horror movies, and analyze it to an extent to see why it works so much. Um, now, I'm not an expert on psychology. I know very little about psychology, except that I should probably go to therapy. Um, and I'm no expert on filmmaking and filming techniques and stuff like that. I'm just a guy who likes horror, so I thought it would be fun to do a series looking at scary moments from horror movies and just talking about them in an extent. And I thought, why not start this new series by talking about my absolute favorite scene in all of horror movies, the hallway scene from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <coughs> Texas Chainsaw Massacre came out in 1974, and many people have considered it one of the scariest movies. And it's been said so many times that Texas Chainsaw Massacre has gone down as one of the bloodiest, goriest, most disturbing movies ever made, and you barely see any blood. Everything happens behind closed doors, and your mind fills in the blanks. That's been said many times about this movie, and Toby Hooper was going for a PG rating when he was making this movie. Of course, he didn't get it. Keep in mind, that's 1970s PG, very different from modern-day PG. <coughs> And for me, the hallway scene where Kirk is killed is probably the scariest scene in the movie. There's a lot of great scenes in this movie, which maybe we'll look at in future episodes, but for now, let's take a look at this scene here. So just a little bit of context before we get into the scene. Texas Chainsaw Massacre is about a group of friends going on a road trip across Texas. Um, there's been reports of some grave robberies, so they go to check the grave of one of their relatives and then continue on their way. They are running low on gas and they have to wait for the local gas station to get more gas. So at this point in time, they're kind of stuck at their old family house and two of them, Pam and Kirk, have gone off by themselves and they notice a house and they're going to go there to see if they can get some gas. I can leave them my guitar, you know, give them a couple bucks. We gotta come back by here anyway. I can pick up my guitar and give them a couple more dollars and bring them back some gas. It's a very simple setup. The first official scare we've had in this movie is the scene with the hitchhiker who's just this guy who's kind of off. And this scene, something mentioned earlier in this scene and before this scene, has a an element at play in the hallway scene here. With a sledge! <laughs> See, that was better. They died better that way. So we look at this setting. Kirk is looking around in this house to try to see if there's somebody home to lend them some gas. And then he starts hearing this sound. And with this sound, we already know that something's off. Because before this scene, they've been wandering around this house, seeing all these junk cars and these weird trinkets around the house, like a clock with a nail in it and various things, a tooth in the wall. So we already know something's not right here, but these people are stranded and they need to get some gas so they can get out of there. So Kirk walks into the house and then boom. few elements right away that I think makes this scene so effective. First is Kirk stumbling on the door. It takes our attention away from the door for a second, and then we, we see Leatherface step into the door frame. And the thing about Leatherface is he's so massive. Uh, Leatherface is, of course, played by Gunnar Hansen, and when you see him step into the doorway, he fills the door frame. He's so big, and that's one of the reasons why 
uh, Gunnar Hansen got the part because he was so massive. So we see Kurt stumble and then we just see this huge man step into the door frame. And I love this quick point of view shot here where he's looking up at Leatherface because that quick point of view gives us a little glimpse at the last thing that Kirk ever sees. You know, the last thing that goes through Kirk's mind and other than that sledgehammer, of course, is seeing this image in front of him. Just imagine that being the last thing you see before BOOM! And for me, a quick point of view shot of the victim just adds that extra element to the film. It's like, shit, this image is the last thing that this guy ever sees. And the other thing that makes this so effective is the scene starts off with that far shot, and then the first real close-up shots we get are Kirk looking up, and then that point of view shot of Leatherface, and then when the swing happens, it cuts to a far view again. Whereas most horror movies would focus on the hammer hitting the guy and the blood squirting out, this one goes farther away, so instead of focusing on the point of impact, we're focusing on the whole violent act as it's happening before us. Because, well, you think about it, when you see a violent act on the news or something like that, like in a news report or a video that's put on the internet of, like, security footage, you're seeing the violence from far away. And I think by seeing the violence from far away adds to a little bit of the realism, because unless the violence is happening to you, you're mostly seeing the violence from a far away point of view, and I think that works a little to an extent. Instead of getting close-up shots, we're seeing this scene how we would probably actually see it from farther away. And then when it goes in for the close-ups, yes, we do see a shot of Kurt's face and some blood, but when it really gets the close-up, the close-up is on his feet, because you notice his feet start twitching and, and flipping around. <laughs> Now that's a callback to earlier in the movie. Remember how I said, you know, a callback earlier in the movie affected this scene? Th there's a scene where Franklin is talking about how his grandfather used to work at a slaughterhouse, and he's talking about how they used to kill the cattle by hitting them in the head with a hammer. Hey, you see those buildings there? That's where they kill them. They bash them in the head with a big sledgehammer. Oh, well, that's awful. It usually wouldn't kill them on the first lick start squealing and freaking out and everything, and then have to come up and bash them two or three times. And then sometimes it wouldn't kill them. I mean, they'd skin them sometimes even before they were even dead. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah. People shouldn't kill animals for food. And then when we watch Kurt getting killed, he gets hit in the head, and then his feet start twitching about. Now, hearing that, that line from early on about the cattle, and then seeing that happen here, it just makes the scene so much more creepy because, okay, we're seeing this human being having the same actions as a cow would in a slaughterhouse after getting hit in the head. And that's another element of, of subtext to this scene because Texas Chainsaw Massacre is essentially about this family who used to work in the slaughterhouse industry and then new, tex uh, new technologies resulted in them losing their job. Hey man, did you go in that slaughter room or whatever they call it? The place where they shoot the cattle in the head with that big air gun thing. Oh, that, that, that gun's no good. With the new way people put out of jobs. You do that? Now, the thing about these people who are working at the slaughterhouse is they were not the most mentally sound people. They were violent people, but they were able to get this job at the slaughterhouse, which allowed them to have a release. But then their livelihood was taken away, and all their life, all they knew was meat. All they understood was meat. And now you see the scene where Leatherface is killing Kirk, you know, by hitting him in the head with that sledgehammer, and then seeing that the feet twitch about, it's that connection. This family only understood meat. They lost their livelihood, which was essentially killing animals for a living, something that gave them an outlet for their violent urges. That was taken away. Now they become cannibals, and they're treating these people like meat, like cattle for the slaughter. <laughs> and 
And for me, it's fascinating how something as simple as the thrashing about of feet after someone is hit in the head can make a kill so much gnarlier. You know, it's like, the, okay, those last death twitches. So you look at this, okay, like, Kurt's doing those death twitches. He's essentially dead, but his body is not yet. <laughs> you know, Kurt's dead, but his body is still kind of alive, and that's why it's having those death spasms, and just makes this moment all the more of a punch in the gut, or a sledgehammer to the head. <laughs> so we got that far shot, we have Leatherface hitting Kirk in the head, and then we get the close-up of the feet kicking, and then it goes back again to another far shot, where Leatherface hits him again with that hammer, and then he becomes limp, you know, just that extra hit to j just get him dead. And then, this part, you know, like, looking at this scene again and watching Leatherface grab Kurt and drag him through that doorway... <laughs> scary as hell. That moment is scary as hell. First of all, you know, seeing this massive guy drag it, and Kurt's not a small guy, I mean, he's small compared to Leatherface, but he seems like a rather fit young man. And then you just see him getting manhandled like that, just hit in the head where he falls down, and then Leatherface grabs him and just drags him through the door like a rag doll. And then you hear that, he slams that door shut and you hear this And that adds that extra element of fear, because we're creating in our mind, what's he doing to him in there? Because at this point, all we have seen is the outside of the house and this one hallway. We don't know what's going on inside that house, really. We don't know what's going on beyond that door. <laughs> and the fact that it's taking place in daylight also adds to the terror. There's... most horror movies, the scary stuff happens at night. There's a way to make daytime scary, and Texas Chainsaw Massacre seems to capture that just because there's just this grittiness to it, and there's this dirtiness all around, and you just don't feel right throughout the scene, even though it's broad daylight. So all these elements put together, the fact that we see the last thing that Kurt ever sees, and it's this scary motherfucker, the focus on the feet after he gets killed, that callback to how cows react when they're hit in the head with a sledgehammer at a slaughterhouse, the fact that there's no real build-up to Leatherface and he just shows up, and of course that final moment where Leatherface grabs Kurt, drags him inside, and slams that door shut, all mixed together makes for my favorite scene in all of horror. For me, it's a perfect, scary scene. <laughs> I, I love blood in my horror movies. I'm a huge fan of, of blood in horror movies, the different kinds. I love gore effects. I love practical effects. But sometimes, in a horror movie, the way you shoot the scene, the elements you introduce early on that come into play again during the scene, the, the subtext that you create and your imagination can make a, a scene so much more terrifying than gore effects. So anyway, uh, those are my thoughts on Kurt's death from uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, I hope you enjoyed this, the first episode of this new series. Um, I look forward to doing more episodes. Um, I have a few ideas set up for scenes to talk about, but if there's any scene that you would like me to talk about, in a specific horror movie, leave it down below, because uh, I, I love to do more of these, uh, just because I, I like talking about horror and analyzing horror, because I'm a freak. So uh, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, what you think of this scene, other scenes you'd like me to talk about. And on that note, um, I hope you enjoyed the first episode of Art of the Scare, and until next time, this is the Maniac, here to remind you that the Grindhouse will never die.